Bonjour everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Adriel and we are now into part three of how to move to Paris. Now, before we get into it, please consider hitting the subscribe button and signing up for notifications so that you'll be notified of every single one of the new videos. Let's get into this. Okay, so we are now into part three of how to move to Paris. In part one, I talked about the visa issue. In part two, I talked a lot about housing. And now in part three, I'm going to talk about kind of all the other things that you need to kind of have in order to make a move, particularly to Paris. So one of the first things that you're going to have to do, like literally right after you get the visa, is you're going to have to get a French bank account. A French bank account is essential for doing anything here. Because the thing is, unlike the US, where you might um, pay your bills, like have them set up to auto pay out of your credit card, all of your bills, everything is automatically drawn out of your French bank account. Okay. So that's why it's super, super important. You're going to absolutely have to have a French bank account. Okay. So the way that I got a French bank account, I don't know if you can actually do anymore. So basically I went to HSBC. I signed up for one of their advanced accounts and I then use that. If you have an advanced customer account, um, they then would open a foreign bank account for you. That method doesn't really seem to exist that much because HSBC has basically sold out of most of the US. So unless you're super uber wealthy, it's not gonna be a path. So as far as getting a French bank account, the way you're going to have to do it is once you got like your visa and everything, basically you're gonna need to come to France. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the best banks to try for Americans is Credit Agricole. I've heard a lot of people who have success with that. Um, and you're going to have to basically um, go into a branch that frankly is close to where you're looking to live and go in there and see if you can get a bank account. It is really, really hard to get a French bank account. If you don't, if you know someone like you have a friend or something, have your French friend go with you or your American friend, whomever is already living in France, ask them to introduce you to their banker and then go speak to their banker. If you don't have somebody like that, then basically like you're going to literally have to like go into French bank and see if someone will give you a bank account. One thing I will say is that I've noticed that it seems that BNP Paribas, which, you know, is a, a French bank, um, they seem to have some relationship with, with, you know, some bank in the US. So I believe it might be Bank of America. So it could be possible that if you have a Bank of America account, you may be able to get them to be able to help you get a bank account um, in France. But getting a bank account in France is going to be um, it is not for the faint of heart. But like all things, it works out. Another bank to consider if you are an American is HSBC France because they already have a lot of American clients. And so then once you get a French, once you have that bank, it might be a little bit easier. Uh, that's the thing is a lot of French banks don't want to take American clients because America has so many more regulations with respect to banking. So that's why I'm giving you some names of banks that have relationships in the US or banks that are used to dealing with a lot of American clients, because if they're already used to dealing with it, then they're used to doing that paperwork and it's just going to be simpler. So that's why I say consider, um, you know, HSBC France, Credit Agricole and BNP Paribas because um, those might be easier banks to get a bank account with. Okay, so once you have your bank account, you're going to be kind of set up. So you got your bank account, you got your housing, you're in France, now we need to get you a cell phone. So here's the thing. One of the fastest and easiest ways to get a cell phone in France is you wanna go to what is called a tabac, okay? You'll see them, they have tabac written all over them, tabac and basically T-A-B-A-C. And what you do is you go in there and you ask for a holiday SIM card, specifically an orange, orange holiday SIM card, okay? And that is going to basically be a SIM card. You put it into your cell phone, right? And it is basically going to give you the ability to have a French number, right? You pay a certain amount of money um, and you have a limited number of minutes, right? It's a prepaid phone card. It's a prepaid SIM card. That's it, right? And it works for a limited period of time. So that's going to help you kind of get started like at the very, very beginning. Next up, I would say to do 
is don't keep that don't keep that number too long. Go into a orange store. I use orange. If you want to do free, you can do free. There are a variety of reasons for people to choose both, to choose either one, whatever. I just went with orange because I was like the easiest and I knew how to do it. Um, so basically what I would recommend is with orange, you go on their website and you subscribe to a package. The thing about a package here is that when it comes to cell phone service, when you get the cell phone, you're going to automatically get fixed line. <laughs> so yes, you're going to have a landline phone number and you're also all going to get internet. It's all going to be in one package. I would say to just get like a package, you're all, you get a package like that. That's what that's going to be. In French, when it comes to a French cell phone, you don't get unlimited data like you get in the US. You get unlimited phone calls because here everybody calls each other. So it's very different. So you're going to want to sign up for a plan that allows you to have enough data. Unfortunately, I think the plans go from like, you know, 10 gigabytes of data, which is nothing to like 80. And so then there's just this giant gap in between the price. Just whatever, um, do it. So there are a couple different types of packages. They'll have a package called an open package and then something else. Basically like do, I, I can't remember exactly what the difference is between them because it's been so long. But I will tell you this, you can Google Translate the whole web page. <laughs> um, you click that little button on Google to so translate this automatically and it will translate it to English. And then you'll be able to kind of see the differences. I believe I have an open pack. I don't know what the benefit was. I think it was just, it was cheaper. And then maybe it like gives you a set price for a certain period of time. Maybe that's what it is. And so that's why I did it. But the thing is, I will tell you this, once you get your like cell phone set up and it, it's like a, such a hassle to switch. Orange used to be owned by the government. It's now private. It is a behemoth. It is very, very difficult at times to deal with. I'm not even like going to like sugarcoat this for you. However, it works and it works. And I just, it's, it is what it is. I will have Orange forever because I'm literally not interested in ever changing. The cell phone service is consistent. It's good. I'm happy with it. Um, and they also have like the largest coverage actually in France. So that's also kind of why people use Orange. So I have an Orange plan. Um, that So that's why I'm just recommending you get it because that's what I have. That's, so that's really all I know. And I do know that it is like the largest cell phone provider in France. So that's how you get your cell phone. Next up, let's talk about insurance. <laughs> Okay, health insurance. So after being here for three months, you can get on the French healthcare system and it's Security Sociale. And then you also get what's called a Mutuel, which is a private health insurance. So the government insurance plan, it covers a certain part, like most of it. And then the rest of it is either you have to pay it out of pocket or you have to get a Mutuel to pay it, right? So it's like a co-insurance essentially. So the government insurance is really great. So don't let anybody freak you out about that. <laughs> um, it's very, very good. You can go see the doctors you need. You can get the treatment you need. Um, it's, it's really great. So the thing is though, getting that health insurance. So here's how you do it. There are... There's this form, you go to this website, it's called Amelie, A-M-E-L-I, and you look it up and it's going to have like the requirements of like the papers you have to send in. Here's the thing about France, you always have to send papers, okay? The papers are always coming to you, you're always sending papers to somebody else. If you have, when you have to send in papers to a government agency, or frankly to anyone, always send them lettres recommandées. Lettre recommande. You do this through the post office and you can actually do it online on the post office website. So you literally can like go to Lettre recommande, upload the document you want sent, type in the name of the person you want it sent to, and then boom, you're done. So I recommend people always doing this um, Lettre recommande because I think it's the best way to ensure that, frankly, your papers get to the French health insurance like health service. So what I did, here's <laughs> here's something to know. The list on their website is gonna be completely different. The list of documents you have to provide on their website to get the health insurance is gonna be completely different than the documents you're going to need to provide that it's gonna say like on the actual sheet of paper, like application you have to fill in. Here are some tips. You do not need a certified copy of your birth certificate. You do not even need an original of your birth certificate, okay? Just get a copy or scan, it'll be fine. 
I actually don't think you need a translation of your birth certificate. It says you do, but I don't think you really need it. In fact, I did not pay for any sort of certified translation. Like I know some, I know a translator who did it for me and that worked. So, but frankly, like if you think about it, a translation for your birth certificate, seriously, mother's name, father's name, it's so ridiculous, but whatever. Um, so I don't actually think you'll need a translation even of your birth certificate. So if you just have a copy of your birth certificate, that's fine. Some things before you leave the US that you're going to want to get, you are going to want to get a copy of your birth certificate, like get an original version and then make a copy. You're going to want to have some scanned copies of your passport in color and in black and white. And you're going to also want to have some scanned copies of your visa. Okay. So those are things that I would say, like, just don't even leave the U.S. without kind of having those because they're going to be kind of essential for setting everything up. So provide um, a copy of your birth certificate, all the other things that they say on the paper. You're going to need a copy of your visa. You're going to need, you know, proof that you've been living here, you know, so a copy of a lease or something like that. Something that shows that you've been in the country a certain period of time. And then that's how you're going to get your health insurance. If you get your, um, have a job, like you have a job through like a French company or whatnot, they're going to provide your mutuelle. So you can get your mutuelle through your company. Um, um, that's your private personal health insurance, or um, you can go out and just pay for mutual, um, and that is the private health insurance that you know subsidizes what the government health insurance doesn't pay. Mutual is not expensive, you all. This is not like the U.S. where you're paying two hundred dollars, three hundred, five hundred dollars a month for health insurance. Like we're talking about, this is going to be like. 30 bucks, right? A month. So it's not that big of a deal. So that's kind of how you get the health insurance. Health insurance is, um, yeah, it's not expensive to go to the doctor here. It's not expensive to do medicine here. So like health insurance is not something you really have to worry about. Like you can be here three months without having health insurance and it'll be okay. Um, but the thing is, of course, if you have a French job, you get that health insurance immediately and you don't have to wait. But you do have to make sure you still apply for your carte vitale and it's just that's just going to take some time. Um, I actually got mine pretty fast, but then again, I moved here during um, COVID, so they weren't processing a lot, so I got mine pretty quickly. So there's that. All right, next up, let's talk about electricity and gas. All right, so you come into France, you're going to need electricity and gas. Electricity is essential. Cell phone is essential. Why? Because to prove that you have a residence, you're going to need a copy of your electricity bill or your cell phone bill every single month. So these are the things that are essential. So be careful if you, for example, find a place where they're like, oh, electricity, gas, all of that is included in the rent. Because the thing is that you need to be able to show you have a contract of this stuff in your name in order to be able to prove that you have, frankly, a residence. Okay. So that's just something to know. So basically, um, when it comes to getting electricity and gas, the big supplier for electricity is EDF. So again, I would say go on their website and sign up for a plan. I personally would recommend that you get a plan where the price is fixed, okay? Where you pay the exact same amount of money every single month. Because here's the thing, if you live in an apartment that has electric heaters, in those like flat paneled electric heaters, you'll see them. Basically, when you turn those things on in the winter, it can be so, so expensive to turn them on. It can cost so much to heat your apartment. And as a result, in the winter, you will find yourself with like 200 euro, 300 euro electricity bills, okay? So that's why I say like, I would actually recommend you just get a flat rate plan where you pay, you know, 100 euros a month every single month and you call it done, then you at least know what your electricity is going to be every single month. Electricity here in the summer, like when I had the variable plan, when I paid like what I paid based upon usage, I think my electricity bill was like 20 or 30 euros per month in the summer. Like it was, it was ridiculous. So um, it was nothing. But then in the winter, the bill would go up to, you know, one month I got a 500 euro bill. It was crazy. So this is why I say you're really going to want to um, probably just opt for a fixed plan when it comes to electricity. Now, if you have a building that has gas, you're also going to need a gas plan. And the gas company is called G, is it GDRF? I believe it's GDRF. 
G-R-D-F. One of the two. Maybe G-R-D-F. That's an acronym. I don't exactly know what it stands for. But that's the Gads Company. Again, go online, go to their website, sign up for a plan, and be done with it. So here's a couple things. Again, sign up for the flat rate plan. <laughs> all right. So here are a couple things to know about all of these things with Orange, with getting, you know, so getting your cell phone, getting, you know, going online to get your gas, going online to get your electricity. There is a really big thing of, um, you know, scammers spoofing websites. So spoofing the official website, for example, of Orange, you think you're on the official website and you're not, and you enter your credit card to come in and like, boom, someone's stolen it. So you need to be really, really careful that you're on the official website. So when you search for this, you want to do like orange and then a French word like portable, you know, telephone, internet, like something that um, makes it clear what you're searching for. And then you want to make sure, look at the end of the, like the, the website address. It should say, you know, orange.fr, right? Like fr is the French equivalent of .com. <laughs> okay. So that's what you should really make sure you're looking for anytime you're going to these websites. So when you go to EDF, you know, search EDF and then, you know, go on Google and then but, but before you click the website, like really look at the results to make sure you're clicking, you know, the actual official website and not something that is a spoof. The last and final point I really want to make about moving abroad is if you're doing it alone, okay? If you're doing it with a partner, if you're meeting your partner who's already here, something like that, it's a lot easier, okay? Um, it's even a bonus if your partner speaks French, right? That's like so great, that's the best. If, however, you're doing it alone and you don't speak French or you don't speak French well, um, it is doable. I did it alone, okay? So I moved here all by myself, in the midst of a pandemic, I didn't speak French very well. Fortunately, my brother is fluent in French. And so he was able to help me with some things and met some French friends during, you know, during COVID. And then they helped me with some things. Things were very, very hard, though. I'm not going to lie. They were very, very, very difficult. It was always very stressful for me. And there came a point where it just got easier. And I believe that point came when I accepted something very crucial about life in France. And here it is. Everything in France is slow. It requires a lot of paperwork. And it's ridiculously complex. Like it's unnecessarily complex. And it looks like it's not going to work out. Because the person is all across from you is always going to tell you no. That's like the first response to any request for help here in France is, oh no, that's not possible. I, that's not possible. Ce n'est pas possible. That's what they do. Here's the thing. That's not possible. I can't help you. All of those things are the start of negotiations, including with the government. <laughs> really, truly, you should never, ever take the no as an actual no. Um, just keep pushing politely. Always be polite, always be respectful. Do not start screaming, do not start yelling. Don't become belligerent. Those things are not going to help you, but just be push, just a little bit pushy. Just keep asking, just keep pressing. Don't let things go. Don't, don't, don't let something kind of like just exist out there. No, keep pushing on it. Keep sending someone a message every single day. Like send that person a message if you have to. Um, and that's really the only way to like kind of get things done here. Um, it's also to note that it is not, it's hard, but another thing you have to realize is that everything works out in the end. It's ridiculous how many things have just been like total chaos in the air. And I'm like, ah, what is happening? And then it all just works out fine. <laughs> it's It's literally kind of like, watching sausage be made okay like no one wants to see how the sausage is made sorry if you're a vegetarian um but no one wants to see how the sausage is being made but then you enjoy the sausage at the end <laughs> this is this is kind of what it's like like you are literally in the midst of making the sausage um 
and it's not it's not easy but it gets better and as long as you know that it's not easy but it's not easy for everyone and it does get better then you're going to be okay don't expect you have to come here without the american mindset don't expect anything to happen fast <laughs> It won't. <laughs> um, expect for things to be slow. Expect for things to take some time. It's going to be a little bit difficult, but it's okay. You can do this. All right? Like, you can do this. It's not impossible, and you should remember that you can do this, okay? It's, there are plenty of people who did it before. I did it before you. In the midst of a pandemic, right? <laughs> So it's like super stressful, um, but you can do it, okay? So there you have it. This now sums up and completes my three-part series on how you move to France. I hope you have enjoyed the series. I ask that you feel free to, you know, send me any questions in the comments. You can also send me messages on my social channels, you know, whatever else. Um, but I'm always able to help you and willing to help you and fail to help you. So have a wonderful day. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and enjoy.